Hi class. Today we're going to be doing lesson nine in our book on advanced compositing, and we're going to be starting on page 220. So you are going to start out with this backdrop.psd, and it has two layers to it. It has the background layer and the title layer. Now we are going to be putting quite a few more layers in here to make a Frankenstein monster. So in order to do that, you can follow the directions in the book um, to browse in Adobe Bridge. And if yours works, then that's great, but mine is not working. So I'm going to show you the alternate way that you can do it. It takes a little bit longer. So we're going to go down to File, Place, Embedded. And inside that Lesson 9 folder, I'm going to choose the Monster Makeup folder. And basically, we want to select all of these, but it won't let us select more than one to embed. So I just have to do it one at a time. So I'm going to go through that, and then I'm going to just click Place on all of those. And then you have to click the check mark. So if you do it through Adobe Bridge, um, it's a lot faster because it lets you do more than one at a time. But since there's only a few layers, I'm just going to do it this way. For some reason on my computer, I have a glitch in Adobe Bridge and it won't even let me open it. But it is a helpful tool. Okay, so this is our last one. So you have all of these layers now and they are pasted in here as smart objects. Um, if you did it through bridge, they won't be smart objects, but that's okay. So we're going to go file, save as, and we're going to call it 09 working.psd. And you want to go ahead and save this. So we are going to arrange the layers. And we want to have the monster hair layer. I'm going to go ahead and collapse that one. Monster hair is going to go at the top of this, the layer stack. So I need to drag title back down right above background. Okay, and this is the order that we want it to be in. So we want to have monster hair. And then we want bolts. And then we want enhanced green forehead. Then we want green ear staples. Green neck stitches. Green nose stitches. Green skin texture. And then Franken. So we're going to turn off our background and title layers so we can just look at the person. And then, I think I've got it right. Okay. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna shift, select every layer except the Franken layer. So we're going to do all these top layers above the Franken layer. And then we're going to do Control T or Command T on a Mac. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to resize all of these layers to about 50% of their original size. If you want to go up here and type in the 50%, you can. We're going to chain it so that it scales the same, both width and height. And I'm going to put it down to about 50%. Okay, and then you're going to have to see how this looks on your thing, but 50% looks too small to me. Um, so you can drag it however wide you think it needs to be to kind of fit this guy's head. But all of those layers are the same scale, so we're scaling all of them together. Okay, and once you're kind of happy with that, mine ended up being about 71%. So see what yours ends up being, and that's fine. You can fit it as you go along. But see how I made the hair one about the width of his head, and then all the other ones scale with it, okay? Um, so you want to click the check mark when you're done with that. And then you're going to zoom in a little bit to see the head clearly. And you're going to hide all the layers except the green skin texture, texture and the Franken layer. Okay, so those are the only two we want to see right now. We're going to use the move tool to move the green skin texture over his face. And it should go ahead and be able to line up with his eyes. At least a little bit. Okay, and that should work. You can use the arrow keys to position it. Um, now you can make it a little bit of a better fit if you use Control-T or Command-T and just kind of stretch it out a little bit so that it's the right width here. And it's okay if you don't keep this to scale. You kind of actually need to stretch it a little bit wider just to get both of his eyes in there. Okay, so go ahead and click the check mark and then save your file. So now we're going to be using smart filters. A smart filter is non-destructive. That means it can be adjusted, turned off and on, and deleted. And you can apply smart filters only to smart objects. So if you have this little icon in the corner of your layers, those are already smart objects. If not, we're going to have to make sure that they are smart objects. And so we'll see how to do that if they're not already. Okay, so you're going to select the green skin texture layer. And then you're going to go up to the filter menu. And there's this option right here that says convert for smart filters. That creates a smart object. Okay, so if yours is not already a smart object, you need to do that. So go ahead and change it to a smart object. Um, mine is already. And then I'm going to go up to filter and liquify. So the liquify tool is going to help us modify our skin texture a little bit. Okay, so we want this to be 
on face aware liquify so that's right here um it says no faces detected so i've got to Select um, show backdrop and you're going to go down here and check that. There we go. Now we can see the layers behind it. And we're going to set the opacity to 75%. Then we're going to go ahead and zoom in. So get your zoom tool and you want to zoom into just the face where you can see it, all of that green layer. And then we're going to be using the top tool over here. It's called the forward warp tool. And this allows you to scoop pixels around, okay? Obviously that's not what I wanna do. Um, so I'm gonna set my brush size to about 150 using the square bracket key, the right square bracket key. And then the pressure I want at 75%. Okay, and then with the forward warp tool, we're going to pull the monster's makeup, um, the right eyebrow down to close the eye opening. So you want to hover over the eyebrow and click and just move it down a little bit. Make sure your show backdrop is on behind mode. Okay. Now it should work. There we go. So if your show backdrop setting is on in front, it's actually going to move the man instead of the green skin. So you want to make sure that is on behind. Okay. Um, so we're going to do that on the left eyebrow and under the eye. You can use the forward warp tool as you wish, but the idea is to kind of get rid of the skin that's showing around his eye. Okay, so we're just kind of picking up the pixels and moving them around. This tool can actually be really helpful for a lot of things. You can modify the look that people have. You can modify shapes, pretty much anything. Okay, so you're gonna um, go ahead and close the gaps around the eyes and then when you're done, you just click OK. And that applies it as a smart filter. So you can actually turn that on and off and see those modifications that you made. And if you double click on it, you can go back in and edit it more if you're not happy with that. Okay, now that we have the skin texture in place, um, we're going to make the green nose stitches layer available or visible. And we're going to do... I'm going to zoom in a little bit first um, so I can see better. Then we're going to get that layer, the green nose stitches, and we're going to do Control T or Command T. We're going to place this over his nose. And it should already fit pretty good, but if you need to resize it a little bit, go for it. You can shrink the width and height as needed. So this should line up with the crease on the green skin texture layer. And then this crease down here should line up on his lip, sort of. Okay, and then click the check mark. Now you're going to turn on the green neck stitches layer. And you're going to move that with the move tool. 
So that's going to go right here under his chin. Again, resize it as necessary. This one needs to be a bit bigger. Because we want it to stretch the full width of his neck. So essentially, we're going to cover up the guy and we're just going to be having this Frankenstein monster. But we need him as our background. Okay, um, press enter to commit the changes. Then you can do the green ear staples. Those are gonna go on the left ear over here. That's looking a bit big, so I'm gonna size it down. Again, this is up to you, your visual preference like where you want it to go even and and how you want to do it but I think I'm going to put it up a bit higher and stretch it a bit wider okay when you're happy with that go ahead and press enter and then you're going to do the enhanced green forehead layer. That layer is looking pretty big. Um, we're going to move it over his forehead. And you'll see that the eyebrows are going to kind of match up with what's there already. You may need to resize that. Uh, mine is a bit small. So I'm going to stretch it the full width of his hair. Okay. And then we're going to turn on the bolts layer. Those are going to go on either side of his neck. I don't know if you guys have read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It's like that. Okay, um, go ahead and press enter when you have those where you want them. And then the last layer is the monster hair. So obviously we need to cover up his head up there. So I'm going to scoot it up a little bit. I think I need to make it a little bigger because it's looking funny on this side. There we go. I'm going to scoot it down. Well, let me stretch it a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, go ahead and save that. Um, so we are going to go back to those eye openings and return to the liquify filter. So go down to this green skin texture layer and double click on liquify. And we're going to zoom in so we can see, oops, see those eyes. Okay. Now that we can see all the layers, it kind of helps us determine what the eyes should look like better. Um, so you're going to use, the eye opening still look a little bit big. So we're going to use this tool right here called the pucker tool which is S, so pucker is going to suck the pixels in, and then bloat is going to distribute them outwards, but we want to use pucker. And we're going to click the outer corner of each eye. And you'll see those pixels suck in. Then you're going to go to the bloat tool and you're going to click the outer edge of an eyebrow. To expand it. Okay, if you press and hold, it's gonna do a more extreme version of it. It just keeps going, so just keep that in mind. Um, so you're gonna experiment with pucker and blow and other tools to customize the monster's face. 
Remember, you can change the brush size with the square bracket keys and other settings. You can undo individual steps by using Control Z or Command Z if the edit menu isn't available. If you want to discard all your current changes and start over, it's easiest to click cancel and then return. When you're happy with the monster's face, click OK and save your work. So I'm just going to mess around in here for a little bit and then I'll meet you back on the main layer. Woo! I don't know what I just did. Okay, so when you're done, um, you're going to paint, do a paint layer. Um, so you're going to add a new layer right above Franken. So we're going to add a new blank layer. And with that blank layer selected, you're going to change the blending mode of that layer, which is up here where it says normal. You're going to change it to color. And the blending mode determines how it interacts with the layers below it. So it combines, color mode combines the luminance of the base color with the hue and saturation of the color you're applying. It's a good blending mode to use when you're coloring monochrome images or tinting color images. Now you're going to go over to your brush tool, which is B for a shortcut, and you're going to make it bigger up to 60 with a hardness of 0. So we want a nice soft brush here. We're going to hold down Alt or Option to temporarily switch to the eyedropper tool. And we're going to sample a green color from the forehead. So we're going to go ahead and grab one of those green colors. And that becomes your foreground color right here in your swatches. Then you're going to control click or command click the thumbnail in the Franken layer to select its contents. So over here on the layers panel, do control click or command click. Oh, the thumbnail. Yeah, sorry. This actual little icon right here. Command click on the Mac. Control click on Windows. And that selects that entire layer. Okay, then you're going to go back to layer one. And we're going to use the brush tool to paint over the hands and arms with that green color. So as you start painting, you should see his skin turn green. And you don't really want to get it on a shirt as much. Just focus more on the skin tones. So because we're in, loom, in um, color mode, we can still see the details on the hands, but we're just kind of changing them to a shade of green. So 
So that's what color mode will do for you. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure his hands are all green. And then also we're gonna go in around the neck and chin, paint some green. Around his ears, change his ears to green. Nose. You can determine how much you want to do on around the lips or if you want the lips to be more flesh colored. I kind of like taking it all green. Okay, except for the eye. See how I got the eye right there? So we don't want to do... You can do if you see eyelid, like you can do around, around the eye, but don't get the eye iris itself. So that's looking pretty good. Um, once you've removed all the skin tones, you can deselect. So we're going to go Control D or Command D to deselect those pixels. Okay, so we've got our monster, right? And we're going to go over here to the three bars or four bars on the layers panel and we're going to choose merge visible and what that's going to do is it's going to take all the visible layers and merge them into one so we have our monster on one layer and we can go ahead and name it monster okay now that we've done that though we don't have access to modify our monster on all of his individual layers so just keep that in mind it does cut down on your file size but it does um, like we can't go in and change the liquify anymore we can't change our smart filters or anything if we do that um, so that's what we want to do and we're gonna go file open Oh, we already have him on the, the correct background. So save that. Um, we're going to turn on title and background. So we have our monster on our background now. And This is okay, we can just save it like that. I think we're good. Okay, so you can undo and redo. Um, I don't know if I've showed you the history panel, but this has all of our previous steps up uh, to like 40 different steps. So if you need to go back in your history, you can do that. Um, you can go back like four or five steps. Now we're going to experiment with filters and effects. So we're going to open a new file. We're going to go up, save what we have. We're going to go up to file open. And we're going to open this T1 PSD file. The tombstone is plain, but we're going to add texture and color to it. So we're going to go ahead and click on this little black and white mini icon here. That's going to set it back to the default black and white foreground background colors. You can also use the D key as a shortcut for that. And then we are going to go up to filter, render, and clouds and since we did the default foreground background color it looks like black and white clouds right um hang on just a sec let's undo that okay we're on layer one
I'm not really sure why it did it to the whole thing. Okay, let's try this again. Let's go filter, render, difference clouds. There we go. Now it's applied just to layer one. And you're going to leave the tombstone in focus, but you're going to blur the rest of it using an iris blur. So we're going to go up to filter, blur gallery, iris blur. Okay, we're going to make it so that the top of the ellipse, or the top of the tombstone, sorry, is focused. So we're going to drag our ellipse up. And we're going to make it so that the words are in focus, but the rest of it is not. This little slider in the middle determines how blurry the edges are. So I would say keep that around like 15, maybe 13. Okay, um, then you're going to click OK and it'll get you out of that window. Then you're going to go over to your adjustments panel and we're going to do a brightness contrast adjustments layer. And for the properties on that, we're going to put the brightness up to 70. Just to brighten up the whites a little bit. And then we're going to go down to a channel mixer adjustment layer and we're going to choose green from the output channel menu and then we're going to change the value um, to 37 plus 37 and the blue value to plus 108 So as you can see, this is changing the hue of our difference clouds. Um, the channel mixer is a useful option for correcting color balance, usually by applying much smaller values than used here. The channel mixer is also an alternative to the black and white adjustment for controlling how colors are converted to grayscale and for tinting effects. In this case, you use the channel mixer to make a purely creative color adjustment to an image. Okay, then we're gonna do one more um, adjustment layer called exposure. And we're gonna brighten it up to plus 0.9, boost our exposure. Okay. So now they're going to have us use the history panel. So you're going to open up that history panel. If you can't see it, you're going to go to window and history. And you can see all the steps that we've done here since we opened the document. So if I want to go back to, let's say, after I made it blurry, I can click blur gallery and it gets rid of all the steps after that, I can still go forward to where I was, but if I make any changes after Blur Gallery, those are my new changes and I don't get any of these back. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, so once we get, let's click on Difference Clouds. And then we're going to kind of start over in a sense, but they're just trying to show you how the history panel works. So we're going to go up to filter, noise, add noise. So noise is like little black and white speckles. You can see them in the preview box here. If you go really extreme with it, you can see that you just get like RGB colors. Um, so that's what noise is. The amount that we want is very small though, so we're going to just do like 3, we're just going to type it, 3%, and then we're going to select Gaussian Blur, and then if you select Monochromatic right there, 
it's only going to be black and white pixels, not RGB pixels. So Gaussian blur and monochromatic. And when we do that, it's going to rewrite all of our steps in the history panel and start over. Okay, so we've got, we replaced it with add noise. Okay, and then we are going to go up to the window menu, go to arrange and tile all vertically. So we can see both of the documents that we're working on. We're going to drag the tombstone with the move tool. So V is the shortcut for the move tool. We're going to click on it and we're going to drag it to the bottom left corner of our other document. If this comes up, you're just going to click OK. Color management. Okay. So now let's put it into our other document. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close out of the T1 PSD. You don't need to save it because you just brought it over here. And then you're going to move it down in front of these other tombstones that are here. About there. Okay. And that's about where we're going to end with that part. So go ahead and save it. Okay, um, so the next thing that we're going to do is place an image of a scared couple in here. Um, we need to move our monster down, though. And I believe we're going to put the title layer on top. So go ahead and do that. Um, if you have a really low resolution image, it is possible for Photoshop to resample an image and increase its pixel dimensions by creating new pixels based on existing ones. Now, of course, this is not the preferred method. If you have the original file and you have a larger file, use that first. But if all you can get is a low resolution image, there are ways to kind of help boost it a little bit. Um, there's a preserve details enlargement option for upsampling a low resolution image. So we are going to open that low resolution image first, file open in its own document. And this is called faces.jpg. It's 44 kilobytes, so that's why it's low res. It's very small from social media. Um, we're going to zoom in to about 300% so you can see. It's going to start to pixelate once you zoom in. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's got like, it's blurry looking. Um, that means that there's just not enough pixel data there to make a clear image. So we're going to go up to image and then we're going to go to image size. We're going to make sure resample is checked. And then you're going to change from inches to percent. And they're going to make it 400% of what it used to be. So I don't know if you can see the image size was 182 kilobytes. Now it's going to be 2.85 megabytes. Um, so drag until you can see the glasses. And in the resample menu, it's on automatic, but let's put it on bicubic smoother enlargement and see what that does. So see how that kind of smooths out the pixels a little bit? 
It looks less rough than it did before. The resample menu includes options that control how to adjust the image for enlargement or reduction. Automatic is the default and it picks a method based on whether you're enlarging or reducing, but you may find that another option might look better depending on the image. Um, go ahead and change that to preserve details enlargement and let's see. That looks okay. It definitely makes it more sharp, but you can see more noise as well. So that's what the noise reducer is here for. The noise is like the little speckles that you see. Those aren't actually like freckles on their skin. It's just extra pixels in the image that didn't get colored the right way. So if you take that noise reducer to 50%, you'll see those little speckles start to go away. So it's kind of a balance act when you have a small image like this. You, you want to preserve details and you want to smooth out pixels. Um, and you want to reduce noise, reduce noise. Um, but sometimes it removes too much value and then it looks funny. So it's kind of a fine balance, but this, this is looking like a good option. And if you click in the image um, preview and then let go, you'll see before and after when you let go. Okay, so we're going to click OK. So we made our image larger. It still doesn't look great, but we're not going to be looking at it that closely. Um, so we're going to go up to the Select menu and choose All, or Command-A, Control-A. Then we're going to Copy, Command-C, or Control-C. And then we're going to go back to our movie poster. And we are going to create a selection to paste into. So we're going to use the elliptical marquee tool. And in the options bar up at the top, we're going to feather it 50 pixels. Feathering is making like a blurry edge on, on our ellipse. Okay. So you're going to draw an oval in the upper right corner of the poster up here. And then you'll see your selection. Okay, and then make sure that layer one is selected in your layers panel. And then you're going to go edit, paste special. Here it is. That's underneath paste and then paste into. So we're going to paste it into our selection. Just click OK on the color matching thing. And so you'll see it, it did an ellipse shape with a blurred edge. And that's the feathering that I was talking about. Um, now you're going to use the move tool. And you can move this around inside the ellipse. So you want it to where you can see both of their scared faces and you're not seeing much of the background. Then in your layers panel, you're going to choose luminosity from the blend mode menu, the very last one. And then move the opacity slider to 50%. So we just kind of want a hint of this, these scared faces in the background. Okay, so there you have it. You finished the movie poster and you want to go ahead and save it. And then you also want to save a copy of it or export it as a JPEG for me so that I can just view it real quick. Thanks.